Starting your day off with a take on Vegas you won't get anywhere else. Hi, I'm Holly Madison, and I listen to Brian Shapiro. Hi, this is William Shatner, and I listen to Brian Shapiro. Hey, this is Larry the Cable Guy, and I listen to Brian Shapiro. Why? Because I'm a good American. So is he. And if you don't listen to him, you need to pack up and leave this country. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. Come on again! What's up, everybody? It is the Vegas Take on a Thursday. Glad you could join us. We have a jam-packed show lined up for you today. A lot to get to. Our number two, Mike Babcock from TMZ Sports will be joining us. Really interesting Floyd Mayweather story to get to. That is for sure. And, of course, Johnny Katz from the Review Journal will be joining us as well. What is there to do in Vegas this weekend? Well, we'll get to that. Today is a very special day, and it's a day to remember those students who died, lost their lives tragically in Parkland. I remember watching TV all day, heartbroken as many of you were as well. And then those students, many of them, decided to do something about it and stand up for those who lost their lives. Some of you might uh, disagree with the way they went about doing it, but I give those students a ton of credit for what they have been able to do and what they continue to do. So with that being said, it hits close to home, October one. We know how many people lost their lives. I know one, someone who was shot in the back by Paddock. And these tragedies, they just continue time after time again. So the question is, what are our politicians doing about it? Well, the majority of people in this country believe that we need to pass common sense gun safety legislation. In fact, 67%. So what does that mean? I'm not a, I'm not a professional when it comes to the laws in this country, guns. But I've, I've been very fair. I want guns in the hands of the right people. But I'm not an expert. So I wanted experts to come in studio today and talk about this issue. And I think it is a very, very important issue. And, it, you know, it's an emotional issue. It's difficult to talk about. But I appreciate my guests who have decided to take some time to join us in studio today. So joining us, Chris Eiffel. He owns the uh, gun store CCS Gunsmithing and his wife, They've been married for 49 years, by the way, so happy Valentine's Day to them. His wife is the NRA chairperson in Las Vegas, and her name is Sandra Eifeld, and I appreciate both of you so much for taking the time to join us. How are you? I'm Go ahead fine. and talk into the mic, by the way. Yeah, I'm fine, Brian, and thank you for inviting us on. Sure, and Sandra, uh, thank you for coming in as well. I appreciate that. So I know that this is a, a difficult subject, right? Mm. And we're going to talk about the NRA. But before I get to the NRA and before I get to some of these other subjects— what do you make of these shootings? Let me just start with a very generic, open-ended question. What do you make of these shootings? What did you make of October 1? And what do you make of this Stoneman Douglas shooting? And then people say, well, now's the time. Stop it with thoughts and prayers. We need to do something about gun control. When you hear that, what goes through your mind and what do you think, Chris? Well, the first thing that goes through my mind is I feel empathy and hurt for the people that were injured, first of all. Now, the biggest thing that I see is that um, these shootings take place. They are horrific. They are usually perpetrated by somebody um, that is mentally deranged. And the first thing that they say is, well, we got to have gun control. We don't need gun control. We need crime control. We need those people controlled. We don't need the gun control. That gun, believe it or not, you know, I've been doing this all my life, basically. I grew up in the business. Mm -hmm. And I have yet to see a firearm load itself and shoot itself. It's never happened. Well, that's, I don't think any logical person would disagree with you there. I'm, there. Not, I'm not one of those people yeah. that says, you know, guns people. Obviously, people but kill we, people. But we, I, I'm not going to debate that. Yeah, but we, we're blaming the wrong thing. We're to not blaming the person with the trigger finger. That's who you blame. Of course, that's the first person you blame. So Chris. It would be, I, I agree. Yeah. But, uh, you know, what I believe, and you mm -hmm. might disagree with me on this, is these high capacity magazines. I think that they're weapons of war. I think that if, uh, you know, law enforcement should have these weapons, I believe if, if you're fighting a war, uh, our soldiers should have those weapons. I'm not trying to take away guns from anybody in this country. Uh, I would never do that. But the point, I guess what I'm trying to say is I do not believe that some of these weapons should be sold, period. And I know you disagree with me on that. You own a store and, and you make a living doing this, well, and I get that. Yeah. But but that's my argument. And, and, and I just think that some of these guns should not be out there. 
Well, let's look at it from this way. You think that some guns shouldn't be out there, so you want to limit what guns are available to people, right? You what guns are available? So you're going to well, make define you, people. Well, to the to the average firearms buyer, you want to limit not to law enforcement, not to our soldiers. No, but to yes. common ordinary citizens. Yes. Okay. I do. Did you know that there's such a thing as called the unorganized militia in this country? Explain what that is. Okay, George Bush mm -hmm. opened the door for it right after 9-11. He called out the militia. You know who the militia is? Yes. That is every able-bodied male mm -hmm. between 17 and 45. Mm -hmm. That's every male in this country yes. that's a citizen. I understand. Yep. Okay. That is the militia. Mm -hmm. So now you want to violate the rights of the militia to arm themselves because you want the choice of what kind of firearm they can have. Explain you, this to me then, Chris. Okay. Why is it that somebody like you needs one of these high-capacity magazines? And don't say it's to protect yourself because there are plenty of guns out there that you can buy that are not high-capacity magazines that well, you could you, protect yourself. I'm going to ask you, what is a high-capacity magazine? Well, what, do you, it, what do you deem as a high-capacity magazine? Based on, based on ammunition, how many rounds can go off in a certain number of time? Okay, what's your definition of high-capacity? Well, I mean, that's that's my definition. Is is what? The speed. You, you the didn't speed. tell me how many to a, rounds to that a, is. To, to a normal to, – to, uh, how many bullets a gun can – can, can be used. Yeah, can be fired. Okay, that, that, is that, that is, that's the difference between one and a thousand. Pick a number. What is a high capacity magazine? Well, that's the best definition I can give you. The one that was used in, in, in Stoneman Douglas, the one that was used in Connecticut, that type of weapon. I don't want those weapons being sold to us. The ones that were used by Paddock on top of Mandalay Bay that killed, what, 58 people. Mm -hmm. Those are the type of guns I'm talking about. And Now, guns are magazines. Which? Those you, types you, of weapons. I'm those type term, of weapons. I'm going to use the term okay. weapon. Okay. A, a, you, I, what kind of weapon did Paddock use? You tell me. He used an AR-15. Mm -hmm. That's what was in the room. Gun that were, the same types of guns that are used to fight ISIS at, at no. war. No. Uh, Absolutely not. Are, so what type of guns Absolutely are being, not. So what type of guns are being okay. used? Okay. Here's the thing. Military, these are what they call select fire guns. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's like the M16, the M16, M4. Yes. Okay. That's select fire. That means that you have a little switch on the gun. Yes. It goes from either safe, semi-automatic, which means that it shoots one shot mm -hmm. with every pull of the trigger, or it goes to a three-shot burst, or in the old days it went to full auto. Well, that let me ask you a basic question. How mm -hmm. many how many shots and how many bullets with the weapon, the AR-15 that Paddock used? How many in a minute? How many? How many without reloading? Yeah. Probably 25, 30. It depends, it depends on what size magazine he had. With the bump stock that was used. The, <laughs> it was, though. Yeah. The bump stock is a novice. It, it's a novelty. It's like a derringer. It works about half the time. It works in the movies. It works on TV. Oh, it works wonderful there. But, but in Paddock real didn't life, use them. In, here's the big thing. Paddock was on what? The 32nd, 33rd floor, 34th floor, whatever. Right. He's shooting down into a crowd, right? Mm hmm Okay, you know how bump stocks work? Bump stocks are used, it's like an isometric exercise. You have to push the rifle forward, and you have to pull back with the other hand right, to make it work. Mm -hmm. Okay, it works shooting straight this way. Yes. It does not work shooting down. The right. gun does not have enough recoil to make a bump stock work. And so why stocks, is it then that the investigators said that he 100% used bump stocks? And why is it that the president of the United States has now banned bump stocks? Why is that? Symbolism over substance. They had to do something. Well, if, if that's the case, then it could be assumed and or argued that there was more than one shooter and one of the shooters was at ground level, yes. right? It's a possibility. If, 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 if bump stocks don't work shooting down, I mean, that was 100% a, a, what was it, a 70-degree angle, something like that? Pretty, well, it was, pro it was a good 30 degrees. Yes. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean— and it was directly down. Mm -hmm. But if, let me if, interject. Sure, go ahead. Absolutely. Because there were a couple of people that was at that particular concert came into the store, and they were on the lower level up under the stage where the yes. shots were being fired. Right. And if this gentleman was shooting and he killed all those people by himself, and I'm telling you it had to be my common sense, it was more than one shooter. How can a bullet coming from an angle? How can a bullet come from an angle? 
comes straight past your ear and you're up on the stage. Somebody else had a gun shooting. I don't, I don't know the forensics of what I'm happened that I'm telling you there were six people that came into the store mm. and they were asking, mm-hmm. what does a gun sound like when it's whistling by you? One gentleman had a scar on the front of his cheek where yes. a bullet scanned him, just schemed him. And that bullet did not come from the sky. But but what you're saying is then this is the, and I don't want to call it a conspiracy theory, well, but I, I guess call it, it, it could be I mean, a, it could be that. If okay, so let me ask you a question: I mean, What Brian, is the benefit, Brian? If that if that's how bump stocks work, and they they, they would definitely know how bump no, stocks I'm not, work. I'm not denying what they're then, saying, and, and with the amount of carnage and damage that was caused by the shooting, I'm not denying it, what they're it, saying. It, mm-hmm. It's not it's but, not unreasonable to assume that that could possibly be the case. But here's my question: Then what advantage are the police? And everyone else investigating this would have by not telling the truth here. If if there was someone else involved besides Paddock, who was dead, okay, mm-hmm. he was obviously one of the shooters. There's no question about that. He bought those weapons. The weapons were found in his room. He was one of the shooters. We could all he agree on that. He definitely was. Yes. I agree with you so, on that. So what benefit would the police have and the FBI have in not – telling everyone if, if there was another shooter. Well, let's go back to the Kennedy assassination. <laughs> Do you think Lee Harvey Oswald did all the shooting by himself? But I, let I, me interject. I need not. to say something. Yes. Because the simple fact is, I'm, I'm, I'm following what you're saying, but the thing is, people on the lower level was being shot at. The gentleman that went upstairs that was supposed to be unarmed security left town why would he leave why would well, he that was strange well let's let's yeah. just let's just, i'm just backing up some questions no and i i know, know what you're talking about and you're talking he I, left town you're yeah. i know i know who you're talking about and they claim he was De- shot in the leg right and then he goes on ellen degeneres and yes. the interview was a little strange to say the least and now here's he what i think not, he cannot be found here's what i think mm-hmm. okay i believe that there's a lot of lawsuits involved here's a lot of money i believe mandalay bay screwed up in several different situations. A lot of people did. And I also believe that the police didn't want to reveal all that information, okay, because there's so much money involved here. They don't want to throw Mandalay Bay under the bus. Not that they don't want to get to the bottom of what happened, but I don't think they – I think the timeline was screwed up, and there's no doubt about that. I agree with you when you say that. I don't know if there was another shooter. I'm not saying what you're saying is incorrect. I don't have the knowledge you have with bump stocks. I don't have the knowledge you have with guns. We all want the same here. On the yes. day a year ago, okay, but 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 again, here's my issue. The NRA, and let's get to the NRA here. Mm-hmm. They donate a lot of money to some of these politicians, okay? Now, I don't think they should because I believe. Mm-hmm. I truly believe that if somebody is donating a million dollars to my campaign, I'm going to side with them. Maybe not side with my constituents, maybe not side with what America wants. That is my problem with the NRA. I believe they buy some of these politicians, and with all due respect, I, I know you're the NRA chairperson here. I know you can't really speak on that, and that's fine. Chris, you can, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, he can't No, either. he can't. I'm okay. the treasurer. He is okay. my treasurer. But, Fair enough. May I, I say can, something, I can, please? Yes. I need to say something. Go ahead. There, If anyone need to get dove into that deeper for us who the NRA put politics-wise. Yes. They need to get in touch with the ILA. Okay. Not the base. There is a chapel sure. that deals with the political end of it. And I totally understand that. And I know you guys you guys can't answer those and questions. And we do that not I, deal with that end totally. of it. Totally. And I, and I don't want to put you in this situation. Thank you. But I'm just giving you my okay, opinion. So, so, so the NRA has a third party that accepts donations, basically. Yes. Sure. Okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And they donate yes. millions and millions of dollars. Okay, I'll give you an example of what bothered me. Dana Loesch, who is the mm-hmm. spokesperson for the NRA. Lash. Or Lash, I, I apologize. Uh, spokesperson for the NRA. Right. Obviously, the NRA pays her a lot of money to be the spokesperson. Let's I just, don't think they pay her a lot of money. They certainly pay her money to, they to do pay what she her does. Money. They pay you money. <laughs> well, the NRA ain't paying me nothing. And, and to be yeah. honest with you, I'm an opinionated guy. And, and no, no one's, what, what and he's so saying is that spokespeople yeah. get paid to be spokespeople. Most people get paid for talking yeah. on So I radio. asked her on Twitter mm-hmm. because, you know, she likes to attack people on one side of the aisle. She mm-hmm. continually does that. Mm-hmm. She doesn't like to listen to people. As I'm listening to you, we're not going to mm-hmm. agree on everything. But yeah. I, I, you guys know a lot about guns, and I respect your opinion. But I asked her, I said, how much money is the NRA paying you? Can you share with the public? Because if you're going to represent the NRA mm-hmm. and you're going to never say one negative thing about the NRA, 
How much money are they paying you? She blocked me on Twitter. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that story. Well, that's you know, that's I, a good here's, story. Yeah, here's the one thing that I can I can tell you about the NRA. I, I, don't don't get in trouble though. I don't want not, you guys to get in trouble. This, this, <laughs> this is how the NRA works. They don't necessarily give tons of cash to candidates. What they do is they mobilize their grassroots, which is NRA members. They mm-hmm. send out you know where their money goes? Their money goes to sending out cards. To let the voters know mm-hmm. how this candidate stacks up against the other candidate. That's what they spend the money on. I understand. All right, let's switch That's topics it. now. I don't want to get you okay. guys in trouble. Here's, but Thank here's you. another issue. You handled that very well. Yes, you Thank did. You. you did. Here's another, and we're going to take some calls on this in a few mm-hmm. minutes, okay? But before we take calls, I believe, and you're going to probably disagree with me on this one, I don't believe that an American should be allowed to buy a thousand guns just for themselves. I think that we should have to keep track. I don't think there's any reason, even if you're a gun lover, I don't think there's any reason why somebody should buy thousands of rounds of ammunition or 100, 200 guns. I I think they should keep track of how many guns you buy. And I know you're going to disagree with me on that, but I think that's just – I just think there should be more limits on how many guns one can buy. And I think we need to do a better job with background checks, and I truly believe that – even if we got rid of all guns, there's plenty of illegal guns on the streets. I'm a realist. I understand there that. I understand that. I'm a mm-hmm. realist. I get mm-hmm. that. Um, but I know you disagree with the with the term of, you know, if this law, if we put this law into place, you're going to mm-hmm. save. If it saves one life, it's worth it. I know you disagree with that. Mm-hmm. Tell me why. Well, it, the simple thing is, we can put this law into effect, and, and everybody says, okay, we got more gun control. If it saves one life. It was worth it. Okay. But we just violated the rights of 30 million people here. Mm-hmm. And how many of those 30 million people may have saved their life, their family's lives, or somebody else's life? So where do you make a trade Well, here's where we disagree fundamentally. Yeah. I don't think it's a violation of somebody's rights if we put good background checks and, and universal background checks in, in place. Uh, I, I, ha- I have no problem with background checks. When I you really say don't. violation of rights, you violation have to admit you have to admit that in this country, mm-hmm. uh, in some gun shows, there haven't been background checks, and there's an easy th- – I'm not saying necessarily now, but – in the past, we haven't had great universal whoa, 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 background whoa, whoa, whoa. checks. Whoa, whoa, whoa. See, now there you're wrong. Because we used to, we do, used to do the background checks. Yeah, we used to do the background checks for the, gun, the gun shows. shows. First of Up all, into there were no private sales inside the gun inside show. The but that's at your shows. I'm not that saying you did show. it. I'm exactly. saying just so because don't, you don't, do it. Don't lump all of us no, into the I, same bowl. I didn't say that, okay. but I'm sa- in some situations, mm-hmm. in some gun shows, Hasn't okay. happened. I'm glad that you guys did that, by the yes. way. I'm glad that you're responsible, and I'm glad that you did that. When I, But it angers me that there have been some gun shows out there where they haven't done that. Uh, it, May I say something? Yes. Sure. And I, I agree with you on certain aspects of that. Yes. It angers me that we have people that sell guns out of the trunk of their cars. Right. It angers me that we have neighbors Selling guns to each other. Can I ask you something about that? Let's just say an irresponsible gun owner sells a gun illegally, or there's an illegal gun that he buys from somebody else, sells it to somebody else. I don't think the punishment is stiff enough. We need to crack down on those people, I believe. But okay. See, the thing is, you're cracking down on your brother, your brother-in-law, your father for giving you a gun for Christmas, your mother for giving her a uh, nephew a gun for his birthday so i agree with what you're saying to a point you what are you going to do cut the heads off because they decide to buy their son before he turned 21 a gun because once he turns 21 he can purchase his own gun but But what if that son is mentally ill if if that gun is purchased legally and the son is given a proper mental evaluation isn't that okay yes yeah, that's not necessarily what I'm talking about, that specific circumstance. Are you talking about the criminals that yes. hang out in the bad hood neighborhoods like Chicago let's just or say, places uh, like that? Let's just say a gang member, for example. Okay, gang well, member. We can talk about gang members. Let's Nobody. talk about gang members. There's a lot of illegal guns out there. For, for, it is, yes. first, but they get them all, out of your garage, out of your yeah, safe, because you have a safe that you you have guns that you didn't buy a safe and put your guns in. See, there's another key. I believe if you're a responsible gun owner, you should have a safe. 
you have to lock those guns up. So, if, God forbid, if something like well, that does well, happen. Well, here's another but thing. But there is a law that's already, like I spoke it's, earlier, it's there robbery. is a law on the books. <laughs> yes, it's already a law on the books. You know what? Enforce the laws we have and stop trying. Because every time someone decides to make a new law, mm-hmm. they are getting paid to write that law. Yeah. I had a gentleman stand in my store and told, t- told me to my face. Which I don't agree I with. I wrote that law. Yeah. And I get paid to write that law, which I don't agree and with. You can't yeah. do what you're doing. Never, never agree with that. Here, here's the here's the big thing. I agree that yeah, people should have safes and lock their guns up, but I don't think that person should be penalized that does not have a safe. If his house is locked and somebody enters it illegally, now how many? How many safeguards do you have to have? Well, I think it would have saved a lot of lives in Connecticut because the woman who who was a gun owner— uh, She had it in the safe. Well, she gave the son access to that safe, clearly. The, the son knew where to go. But then, There you go. So what good did the safe do? But not cutting you off, Chris. Mm-hmm. I'm going on his side for 15 minutes. 15? That mother— <laughs> That mother knew that child from the time she gave birth to that child. Right. And anybody out there can call in and agree with me or disagree. I really mm-hmm. don't. Well, he was he was a kid who— I, I agree that mother could have definitely seen it coming. Absolutely. She saw it coming. Yeah. She Absolutely. Knew, it's just like Jeffrey Dummett's mother. Yeah. God bless all of them, and now they, that they are in heaven. God bless them all. But I'm going to explain something to you. She knew Jeffrey was tearing wings off of butterflies. Right. She saw that. She saw her son dig a hole and bury a frog in it, and he wasn't the type of frog that was supposed to be in that mud. So as a parent— you see your children grow. You see if if a little girl has got dolls tied together. I agree. I totally agree with what you're saying. But and we got to take a break here in a minute. But in that specific situation, okay, she, she should have never ball? allowed her son to shoot a weapon. She he was not never, fit. She should never allowed him to drive a car either. I agree. But and did, he should not have been allowed to wear give, Nike tennis shoes. But did either. they give her time, <laughs> Mike? Well, before you go to your commercial, did she get time? That's what I. That's unfortunately, me. unfortunately, she lost her life, and and, there, and, right. and I hate to speak negatively about someone who loses her life. It's a horrible situation, That's but sad. we all agree she was not responsible, That's and those are the gun yep. owners that I want. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We're jo- talking with Chris Eifelt from CCS Gunsmithing. His wife is Sandra, and she is the NRA chairperson in Las Vegas. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to open up the phone lines. This is a very interesting topic. Unfortunately, it's a sad day over there uh, at Parkland. Uh, the one-year anniversary, we lost 14 kids and I believe three adults in that horrific shooting that took place. We're talking about gun control. It's an interesting topic. It's an important topic. And I think uh, Democrats and Republicans need to get together and, and, and agree for once. Uh, of course, we got a lot of other stuff to get to, but the phone lines are open here. I'm going to open up the lines at 257-5396. Again, that number to call, 702-257-5396. Be a part of this discussion, and we'll take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to The Vegas Take on the all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM, KDON.